finalists in the final round of Dramatic Interpretation. In sixth place, from Buffalo Grove, Kamisha Perot. In fifth place, from Downers Grove South, Jane Drews. In fourth place, from Thornton High School, Destin Patton Warner. In third place, from Glenbrook North, Amanda Morantz. In second place, your tournament runner-up in dramatic interpretation from Belleville West, Cody Essien. And your tournament champion in dramatic interpretation from Prospect High School, Ivy Fishman. And now your tournament champion in dramatic interpretation, Ivy Fishman. Hello. Hi. Uh, uh, my name is Helene Niedla, and if I seem a little nervous right now, it's because, well, uh, uh, this is my very first time speaking here at the Massapequa chapter of the parents of the lesbians, the gays, the bisexuals, the transgender, the questioning, the creatively concerned, and others. <laughs> you know, we should just call this group Why Jimmy Has No Friends. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> because we, we are all proud. Because we're so special. But I am here to tell you, to prove to you, why I am the most accepting, the most tolerant, and, and the most loving mother of all time. You'll see. Agatha Christie once said, the love a mother has for her child is like no other. It knows no laws, no pity, and dares everything in its path. In Pride and Joy, we meet Helene Nadler, who displays her fierce love for her children and all of their quirks. Through her struggles, we realize that it is in our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. Pride and Joy by Paul Rudnick. So it all started about 10 years ago with my oldest child, my daughter, Leslie. <laughs> Leslie, what was I thinking? <laughs> she comes to me and she says, Mother, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> and I says, Leslie, let's look at yourself. You're 22, you live with a female social worker. I mean, smell yourself, what is that aroma? Jodie Foster number five? <laughs> of course you're a lesbian, honey. I've been telling you that for years. <laughs> oh, and she, she was so happy. We were both so happy because, because it's all out in the open and because I am the most loving mother of all time. Oh, wait, wait, one year later, my middle child, my son, Ronnie. Ronnie, Leslie, do I ever learn? He comes to me and he says, Ma, I got something to tell you. And he says, you're gay. It's swell, no problem. Will and Grace, I love that show. It was adorable. <laughs> but he says, no, no, Ma, that's not it. I, I was born into the wrong body. And I says, so was I. It's called Atkins. Get over it. <laughs> and he says, no, Ma. I was meant to be a woman. And I have to sit down. But he looks at me and he says, can you imagine always feeling so uncomfortable, so, so alone and so unhappy? And I could. So I says, Ronnie, here's the visa. Go be happy. 
Nine months later, I am riding high. I'm thinking, look at my beautiful family. There's Leslie and Marsha. That's her partner. They're expecting a baby soon. And then in walks Ronnie, excuse me, Veronica. And she, she, see, I said it, she. She comes to me and she says, Mother, I'd like you to meet my girlfriend, Renee. Yeah, I'm also a lesbian. And, and before I say something, I know I'll regret. In walks my beautiful David. You know what he says to me? Ma, I got something to tell ya. And I says, let me guess. You're gay, you're transsexual, you're a pregnant Nigerian lesbian flight attendant. What do you got? <laughs> and, and he says, well, well, first off, I'm gay. And I says, yawn, next. <laughs> and then he says, I'm also seriously into leather. I says, well, that's great. I'm into fur. <laughs> but he says, no, I'm the president of the International Order of the Gay Leathermen, which promotes bondage, sadomasochism, and verbal abuse. And, and you know, for, for, for just a second, I, I look at him, and I become so intolerant, and I just say, what's wrong with you, huh? Did we not love you enough? And that night when, when everyone leaves, I turn to my husband and I says, Maury, I gave birth to three perfect children. What did you do? <laughs> And he ignores me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm babbling. It's just, I don't know. Uh, lately, uh, I've been feeling very sorry for myself. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. It's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, the other night, my beautiful daughter Leslie gave birth to the most beautiful baby girl, Rebecca Miracle O'Malley Nadler, in that original. No, I, I think it's wonderful. And after all my children leave, and my husband Leslie turns to me and she says, Ma, go home. And I says, No, no, I can stay here, I can get you things, don't you worry about it. And she says, no, Ma, Marsh is here. Go home. Go home. To who? To what? To, to a, a husband who ignores me? A, a photo album filled, filled with ancient history of David and Diphus, Leslie holding the tennis racket, and Veronica when she was a man. And that night, I had a dream. I gave birth to Siamese twins. And, and I thought to myself, why are my children so odd, so hard to shop for? But I, I, I looked at them, wiggling in the little crib. And through all of my heartache, a thought arose. At least they'll never be alone. And you know, maybe, maybe all my children, with all their mashigas, maybe, maybe all, all they're doing is trying to find very new, very individual, and very irritating ways. Not to be lonely, like me. But, but that, that's when I realized it. Not only was I a proud and loving mother, but I could compete. See?
told you I was the most loving mother of all time.